for the first stool transformation, I picked up this plant stand at the Goodwill for $4.49 and then I got an additional 50% off on top of that. And I really liked that this stool was heavy duty. However, I was not crazy about all of these tassels and detail work on the bottom half of this stool. So my first step in this project is going to be to add Henry's Feather Finish. That's like a concrete substance and I wanna get it to the consistency of like tomato soup. So I'm just mixing enough, just kind of eyeballing things until I get the consistency right. And then I'm going to place it all over this entire stool because I want to eventually wrap this entire thing in jute cording. And in order for the jute to not look super uneven, I wanted what was underneath to be a little bit more evened out. So now I'm just taking a little bit of sanding to the entire stool just to give it a little bit of a uh, smoother texture so that way the jute will adhere well to it. And with the base of our stool all prepped, I just now needed to add the jute cording all around. So I started in the middle of the top of the stool, adding a dab of hot glue and then kind of making like a circle pattern all the way around. And honestly, this is such an easy project and you can apply this to any stool you might have, any plant stand you might see in a thrift store or something like that. And I think it gives a really nice kind of look, especially for the spring and summer months. For me personally, I really wanted to do this project only on a stone side table because I wanted this to go outside and I knew that if it was like plastic or even wood, it wouldn't really weather the storm and it would just like, I don't know, blow away in my neighbor's yard. So I wanted to make sure that it was heavy duty and could kind of stay outside and not just deteriorate over time. And I cannot wait to put this on my front porch as the weather warms up. For the next stool transformation, this is probably one of the more typical things you'll find at the thrift store, and that is a outdated bar stool with a DIY upholstery job, and it's just all not looking great. And I ended up paying $6 for this one at the Goodwill, which in my opinion is a pretty good price. I think anything under $10 that is A, sturdy, that's the number one thing I look for, B, in pretty good condition, and C, could probably be upholstered pretty easily. So I, those are kind of the things that I'm looking for when I'm choosing the bar stools that I kind of redo from a thrift store. So this is what I'm left with at the moment. So I just gave it a light sanding, and then I took some pre-stain, and my plan was I wanted this to be more like a dark walnut, as you can see in the previous clips my floor is very like ashy gray and this orange wood just really clashes with it so I was really trying my best to just kind of deepen the wood tone and it just was not looking great so I decided to just scratch the whole wood stain idea and just paint it black and I always say that always start with stain because it's a lot easier to go that way than the other way so start with stain see if you like it if you don't it's a lot easier to paint on top of stain than it is to paint, undo what you just did, and then stain. So that's my little takeaway from this project for you guys. And as you can see here, we're still looking like a bad spray tan, just kind of like a really orangey brown, which was not the look I was going for. So I did decide to just paint it black and I will link all of the materials that I use for these projects in the description below. And I think that this just looks better. It looks cleaner and much more my aesthetic. So um, before I bring it inside, I am going to do this Krylon Crystal Clear acrylic coating and um, just spray it a couple times on top of the black. And for the next step, it's just time to reupholster. I am not the best at reupholstering, but I always just try, I keep flipping it around, um, pulling it taut, not too taut, just taut enough. And I just, I'm always making sure what it's looking like from the top is what I want it to look like before I kind of like seal the deal with my staple gun. And then um, when you get to like the legs, it's helpful to kind of create a slit just so you can kind of wrap the fabric around that peg. And once I was pretty happy with the way it was looking, it's just time now to hammer in some of those staples that didn't go in all the way and then um, just cut off the excess so you don't see it from the top. And that pretty much finishes off this project.
And for our next dual transformation is going to be an Ikea hack. And it is probably one of the projects you guys have replicated the most and tagged me on Instagram, which I just love. So continue to do that. I love seeing what you guys come up with. And that is just to take this Marius stool from Ikea and take this wooden round I actually picked up from the thrift store and we are just changing out the tops. And that is why I love this Marius stool. I've actually seen something really similar to this at Five Below. So if you don't have an Ikea near you, I would say just use that one. And a lot of times the ones at Five Below aren't black. So you could always just spray paint it. So all I'm going to do with this little wooden round is remove those little felt pads because I didn't want anything to kind of like obstruct me laying this wooden round on top of the stool base. And after all of those were removed, I just had to make sure that the screws that I chose to put um, through this one round wouldn't stick through the top, but would also keep it nice and secure. So I had a few that I had to choose from, and I think I ended up picking the smallest one actually. And I just took my drill and I screwed in from the bottom through the top, um, and it just worked out really great. And I love this stool. I still have it to this day. I think it's just like a really like, no matter what your interior design style is, it's just a really nice stain And for the next stool transformation, it is again another Ikea hack and I wanted to make a woven cane stool using the Curie stool from Ikea. It is already really affordable, really um, Scandinavian looking. It's only $12.99 and we are going to be adding a cane backing. Now this stool looks great just as it is. You honestly don't have to do a thing to it, but I wanted to add this little detail and I wanted to try my hand at using some cane webbing. And if you do exactly what I did, you'll definitely have some cane left over if you order the one from Amazon. So I just followed the instructions to a T with this cane project. So the first thing you have to do is soak the cane webbing for 30 to 45 minutes and then you will want to soak the spline for five to 15 minutes. So I just set a timer on my phone for 40 minutes to get the cane started. And then once I was about 30 minutes out, I added the spline. So the spline, if you're not familiar, is what's in the frame right here. And it's just kind of like the rotting for the cane. So I'm just sketching out the stool, the cane, and where I'm gonna add everything and how it's gonna look and the idea that I have on my mind on paper so I know what to follow. Also invest in some good scissors and some Gorilla Glue sticks because that made this project go so much smoother. Cane is such an interesting textile to work with because after it's been soaked, it becomes so much more malleable to work with. So I'm able to kind of manipulate it around the back end of that stool. So now that I've determined kind of how much I'm gonna need, I'm just trimming off that bottom part that I know for sure I'm not gonna be using anyway with my scissors. I'll make sure I link these scissors in the description box below. They are amazing. And I can't believe I did so many fabric projects without them before. One thing that I did find to be helpful was just to fold the cane webbing in half so that way I could create the same arch and then cut the same amount off of the bottom so everything was nice and symmetrical and matching on both sides. In order to attach the cane to the back of the stool, I went back and forth with this so much, but I ended up going with Gorilla Glue for this portion. I did use my staple gun at the end, but for this part, I decided it was gonna be best to just apply some hot glue. And surprisingly, the hot glue with the soaked cane was still totally fine. It still adhered really well to everything that I was doing. So I gave myself a little bit of slack on the cane just to make sure that I could always, you can always take away stuff, but you can't always add it back. So I just did one archway around with one splash Line, one solid piece and then I'm just trimming off the excess and then I'm taking another piece of spline and attaching it directly to the back of the stool so then that way everything is really contained and it looks really well finished and basically I just kept adding on those splines to make sure that all of the glue and all of the pieces that were like attached together with glue were all kind of being disguised and hidden so then that way everything was like really clean 
So I'm just pulling down on these bottom pieces to see how it would look stapled. And I really liked how that looked, but before I staple it, I just wanna make sure that everything was really well solidified because cane does tighten as it dries. So I didn't want there to be any like weird bumps or anything like that. I just didn't know because I've never worked with cane before. So I wanted to make sure that everything was kind of like dried first before I clamped it down for good. Another thing that I did do, um, I didn't like that cane at the bottom, like at the base of the stool part. So I decided to take one of the splines and cut it in half. So then that way I could kind of add almost just like another like little detail, but just to give it a more clean finish. And um, I just did that with my scissors and again, applied that with some hot glue. And I had just a little bit more of that spline left. So I decided to add it to the top just to make it one solid piece. And I stapled the bottoms down to the base of the stool. And for the next stool transformation, I wanted to make a boucle milking stool. I think you guys can all level with me on this one. This was not even something that I thrifted. This is something I just found on the side of the road and it looks like I found it on the side of the road, right? Like it looks pretty beat up, but I've been inspired by two things and it's one of them is a milking stool, which is just really like an aged kind of vintage stool. And then the other thing is boucle fabric. Now boucle fabric is extremely expensive so I don't know if you guys remember but I recently went thrifting and I found this skirt that reminded me so much of that fabric but it was only three dollars and fifty cents for the skirt so when I saw the skirt I was like I knew I had to reupholster the stool and kind of combine the two things that I've been really trying to achieve so obviously the reupholster job was actually was really unusual because normally no matter how bad the reupholstering job is, it's usually done with staples. And this had like nails going sideways, nails going like, it was just all over the place. So normally you would just take um, just like a flathead screwdriver and just pop those staples right out. But the nails were quite long. So I'm actually surprised it didn't puncture through the fabric on the top. But after I was able to remove all of those nails, um, I was able to see kind of what was covered underneath which was actually way nicer than what they covered it with but you know to each their own so I've gotten a few questions from you guys on how I clean my thrifted items. And so for example, an item like this, I haven't yet cleaned it because I knew I was gonna be removing that top piece. Um, if you know you're going to reupholster something, I wouldn't even really necessarily bother cleaning it or you know, like I don't even know how you would clean it if you weren't planning on just reupholstering it. So um, what was nice was what was underneath was actually plastic. So I could just wipe it down with some soap and antibacterial spray to just get rid of anything that was undesired in my home and then um, you know you just want to let it dry in extreme heat very well it's been nice here in Maryland it's been nice and sunny so after I was able to do that I just stuck it out in the Sun for a while just to make sure we were okay so after that was all pretty well dry, like I mentioned earlier, I've been really into that boucle kind of reupholstered look that everybody's also really into right now, but I'm definitely not into the price point. So this seemed like a better solution for me. Um, you can obviously go to the fabric store and buy like a yard or whatever of boucle fabric. It's just gonna be a lot more money. So all I'm doing now is I'm just kind of measuring around this seat portion of the stool and just making sure I have enough slack. And luckily I had just enough. So after I'm able to get one corner down pretty well, um, I like to get just kind of like, I call them like securement staples. And it's just to really secure the fabric in place for the most part. And then you can kind of fine tune and go in between all of those staples because you wanna keep flipping it around, making sure what you're gonna see every day is looking like what you had in mind. Another tip I have is make sure you keep a hammer handy just in case your staples are kind of meeting some resistance with whatever you're upholstering and you can just hammer them in there and then that way everything is really nice and secure. 
And now that we're done with the cushion part of this project, it's just time now to work on the stool. And as I mentioned earlier, I've been really loving those like vintage milking stools. And in order to get that kind of weathered look that I was really trying to achieve, I just took some coarse grit sandpaper over the entire thing just one time. And for the feet of this stool, I used a product called Flitz where you can kind of restore brass and it worked out incredibly well. So I will definitely link it in my description if you are trying to restore brass and just a refresher of how the stool used to look and how it looks now. And for the next stool transformation, we are going to be again using the Marius stool, but this time I wanted to make it an all Ikea hack and that tray is also from Ikea as well. And for the top piece of our table, we're gonna be using the Roman Tisk, I believe that's how it said, the Roman Tisk uh, tray, and that is only $9.99, so also really affordable. So all in all, the main pieces that you'll need from Ikea are gonna be about 15 bucks for a side table, so not too bad. So I'm just placing the tray on top of the stool. Obviously I didn't add that stool part. It's just the tray directly to the legs of that stool. So the first thing I decided to do was give it a couple coats of black spray paint. I'll make sure I link the spray paint that I use in the description box below. I like a flat black paint, but if you like more of a satin, that would also look really good for this project as well. And once the paint had all dried, I just decided, you know, I could use my hot glue gun or I could just use E6000. And for some reason, when it comes to metal, my hot glue gun doesn't do the best job. So I prefer to use E6000 in these sorts of situations. So for the first project, I was really methodical and like very careful where I placed the glue for this project, glue it up because honestly, you need a lot of glue to make sure that everything is gonna adhere really well together and that you're gonna have a nice sturdy table. And now that our E6000 is on top of those legs, it's just time now to put the tray on top and I'm just making kind of like minor adjustments to make sure that everything is nice and centered. And the tray actually has a mark where it is the center, so that was very helpful as well. So I just grabbed an old box and then I grabbed a 20 pound weight and um, I wanted to place the weight inside of the box just so the weight didn't like ruin the bottom of the tray. And now one thing was just still missing a little something for me and so I just decided to do a little bit of gold paint just on the rim of this tray just to give it a little something extra. Totally optional, but this is how it turned out. For the next stool transformation, my mom had told me that she would want a plant stand that was wooden on the bottom and concrete on top. And so I picked up this wooden bar stool from the thrift store and it was only $5. And the top already looked crusted and busted and we were not gonna be able to salvage it anyway. So I decided to just kind of aggressively remove the bottom from the top. Um, I don't know how to do this gracefully. So if you plan on like saving that top piece, I'm not your girl, but if you don't care about the top, you just literally have to hammer it off. That's the easiest way. And now you have this really nice base and you can do with what you want with it. You could put a basket, you could put this little stone, you could do a wooden round. You can do so many things after you remove the piece that you don't like. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just taking some Dawn soapy water dish soap and I'm just washing the whole thing down. And then I'm just gonna take some Goof Off, which is a really good product. If you ever see something at the thrift store that has a lot of paint splatter, Goof Off does a really nice job of removing all of that paint um, that's on whatever piece you're looking at buying. But before we can attach that top piece, those nails are what was connecting that old top piece to the bottom. So I had to remove those nails and I just did so using my hammer. And now I'm going to take some super glue gel and attach the bottom of the bar stool to now my new top. There's a lot of DIYs where you can like put the bottom of a stool and put it in concrete and it like hardens around what you did and you mold it kind of. But I just think this way is a lot easier. Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. And this honestly only cost about $7. So I definitely think it's a win.
And if the wooden base isn't your thing, you could also apply this same concept using the Mary stool. I've done this project in the past. You guys also really liked this one. You tagged me on Instagram a lot with this one. And it is just to, again, remove that top piece and add a stepping stone that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're, again, a couple of dollars. And this time I did use E6000 instead of super glue. And just to kind of mattify the shininess of the metal, I did spray paint it with some matte black spray paint. But otherwise, a very easy, simple project project that I think a lot of people really liked. So I'm glad to share it with you guys again and hopefully just in time for spring you guys can get your hands on some of these things. For the next stool transformation, this is probably the most unique thing I have ever found at a thrift store, and it is this bowl stool. And the Goodwill was asking $15 for it, and I inquired a little bit about it. I wanted to know like where it came from, who donated it. You know, I'm very nosy. So um, the person who donated it, I guess, was a young girl. She said it used to be her grandma's. She doesn't like it. She was using it as a plant stand. So um, I ripped the tag off and as soon as I did it was already damaged so the first thing I wanted to do was just I wanted to sand it down I wanted to see what was underneath kind of remove as much water damage as I could just with some light sanding and I just went all around I didn't use my electric sander because I was worried that I would break something because it wasn't the most stable of stools for sure but um, I just wanted to be gentle with it just because I didn't know what I was really uh, working with and so I brought it home, I texted my family, I sent them a picture, I said, do you know anything about this? Like, do you know what it was used for? And no one really said anything. Everyone just kind of said, this is like really weird. Like, why did you pick this up? It's so ugly, yada, yada, yada. But there was something about this little stool table that was to me very charming. So I decided that, I really love it, so I wanna do something to it to make me love it more. And as I've mentioned previously, that orangey wood just does not go with my house at all because of the color of my floors. So I have to be really careful in the stains and the colors that I choose so it doesn't clash with my floors because I want to add to my space, not detract. I did find a little bit of information about it and it looks like if it would be in mint condition, it perhaps was a yarn stool. If you know anything, just leave me a comment down below. So I thought about what I could do to it and I didn't wanna do any like harsh chemicals like bleach or um, stain until I knew more. So I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna keep it really simple and I want it to be something that I can undo if I need to, but I also want it to go with my current space. So I just decided, that whitewashing it would be kind of the most gentle treatment of all of the treatments I could do to this little table. And whitewashing is a form of color washing. If you've ever heard of that, people blackwash furniture, whitewash furniture, and things like that. So all I'm doing is I'm mixing water with white paint. I believe I used alabaster and a foam brush, and I'm using it until I get about the consistency of skim milk. And I am just going to start in a more inconspicuous spot like the side there, and I liked the way that looked, so then I applied it to the middle. And the middle was the part, honestly, that I cared about the least just because it had had the most damage in my opinion. So I'm just applying one coat all throughout and then I'm going to take a damp rag and kind of wipe off the excess. And I did this five times. So I don't know if I maybe just should have painted the whole thing white, but I was worried that I was gonna fill in the grain too much and I wasn't gonna be able to see a lot of that beautiful detail that really drew me to this little charming table in the first place. So I just continued that process, just painting on and wiping off until I was happy with the end result. And I know there's gonna be some people who really hate this idea and I totally hear you. Um, I would not have painted this had this really been in perfect condition or at least good condition but because this little stool was already looking pretty rough i felt okay doing it i think that's like the line for me if the antique is in really good condition 
I don't touch it. But if it's not, then I feel like I have more of like, I guess, a right to um, transform it and make it feel like mine. And all that was left to do was to seal it. And I'm so happy with the way this little table came out. And I feel like it really adds to my space. For the last project, it is one of my favorite things that I have found at a thrift store, and that is this asymmetrical stone side table. And I found this at a Hartville thrift shop that one of you guys actually recommended to me, and it was so incredible. Thank you so much for recommending that store to me because I found this little side table here, and it was amazing, but I did not like one thing. It had a lot of pink tinge. So I'm gonna share with you the easiest project of the bunch, and I went to Lowe's and I found this linen white chalk paint, and I am just going to spray this entire stone side table with this white paint. Stone side tables are having such a moment in home decor right now, but they are so expensive. Like even the ones at Target are at least $100. And this side table is heavy, so it feels like it's good quality. It's not made from like Dollar Tree stuff, like it's actually stone, which I really liked, but the color was just wrong. So, so often I find at the thrift store, it's not that you have to move mountains to get the home decor look that you're really trying to achieve, but just changing the color or adding a little bit of texture or making small adjustments to things that are already okay, but making them your aesthetic. And after I gave it two coats of this linen chalk paint, I did a once over with some matte clear spray paint as well, just to seal everything together. And that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below which stool transformation was your favorite, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.